Today, I am joined by the Reverend Christine Carnati Arturo, a district superintendent of the West Middle Philippines Annual Conference, which is in the Manila Episcopal area, where Bishop Siri Francisco is the Episcopal leader. Good evening, Christine. I realize it's morning here in the U.S., but in the Philippines, it's it's evening. Good evening, um, Kenita. So good to have you with us. Thank you for this opportunity. Wonderful, wonderful. Christine, will you, will you help our viewers get to know you and tell us a little bit about your, your journey in ministry and also about your ministry setting in the Philippines? I entered the ministry when I was 18 years old. So as a young people and as a woman a local pastor, as I served the church or while serving the church, I, I suffered from discrimination, persecutions, and abuse also and harassment. But all this made me more stronger, wiser, and I think better and resilient in the ministry. And now, this is my 25th year in the ministry. So I started from a small church with no salary. And now this is my third year as a district superintendent. And for our ministry setting here, particularly in my district, we have 25 local churches. And we have also indigenous uh, churches with the tribal churches. And half of that are prime churches here in uh, Zambales district. So that's the setting of our uh, ministry. More than half of it are small churches, actually. Can you tell us a little bit about the indigenous tribal churches in your district? Yeah, these are, we call them Aita, Aita people. And then we also have uh, indigenous or Aita pastors serving these churches. So we train also these Aita pastors in their churches. Um, we have less than 10 ministries with them and we are supporting them from the district fund because the, they were not able to support their workers. So we have the augmentation fund from the district and the ministry support, which came from our prime churches in the districts, which is uh, 13 to 15 prime churches, supporting this uh, almost 10 uh, mission and tribal churches. What, uh, from your perspective, are the most important issues facing the people that you serve over the over the entirety of the Episcopal District? What are the issues that people are grappling with? Uh, economically speaking, it, it's also unstable job that causes uh, poverty. In terms of uh, the spiritual aspect in the church, where our young adult, we call them the young professionals, every time they enter the age of 24, I call it 24 to 40 window, which is, this is the dropout year or the MIA or missing in action years uh, within the church. Children, young people, which is, our young people here is ages uh, 12 to 23. But when they reach the age of 24 up to 40, uh, some are leaving the church because of their jobs, uh, of their opportunities outside the church, they, they work abroad. And because there are many overseas Filipino workers, we also suffer from uh, children or young people who we have, we have many problems with mental health, uh, depression among uh, young people because of you know uh, the, the parenting, uh, ministries. That's why we are trying to establish the OFW ministry, Overseas Filipino Worker Ministries in the church. That's, uh, I think, one of the greatest challenges that we have right now. This is quite some challenging issues. What, Christine, would you tell listeners who don't live in the Philippines um, about the people you serve and about doing ministry in your context that you think that they don't know? What would you tell us for those who aren't there uh, about your ministry and the people that you serve that you think that we don't know? 
I am strongly convinced that our churches here in the Philippines are full of hope. Why? Because we have many young people. We have our best practice here in the Philippines. It's the Christmas Institute or the Christmas Camp. Uh, we are holding this from December 26 to December 30. During Christmas break, we are having the camp different parts of the country so the average is 13,000 young people yearly wherein uh, this is the time where where or when we are doing our recruitment recruiting those who will enter the ministry pastors deaconesses or uh, lay ministers those who will serve the church and then we also have their uh, ministry coaching after that for for follow-up that's why uh, I'm telling that uh, our churches are full of hope because of these young people and children because we are training them. We also have the uh, VCS Vacation Church School during summer where our church planting uh, starts or started or we are starting our church planting ministries with this vacation church school we are bringing the church to children in remote areas in the mountain seashores everywhere we are bringing the bible there every week and then to help the follow up after that summer we are teaching bible study to their parents and then uh, it's good that they are welcoming we are coming us in their home so we are now planting church there a worshiping congregation and soon to be local churches so i think that's one of the remarkable practices that we have that is a remarkable practice to use uh, VBS, uh, Vacation yes. School, yes. as a way mm -hmm. to plant churches. That's wonderful. Mm 